Gaku Concepto. Hi, I'm Josh, your person, and this week I'm going to explain to you when to use sharps or flats when spelling scales and chords. So, let's go open up MuseScore and take a look at some scales. All right, so in music, there are 12 notes. We only have seven letters to name all of these, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, so we need sharps and flats to fill in the blanks. Um, on a piano, the white keys are naturals, and the black keys are sharps and flats. First of all, let's take a look at the key of C. So let me show you the C major scale right here, because it's just C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. Okay? So, this scale uses no sharps or flats. The key of C is made up of only the white keys on a piano. There are no sharps or flats anywhere. If you do start using sharps and flats, if you move to another key, um, then key signatures start popping up. So if you were in the key of F, let's just move this thing up from, from C right here. Up the, just move the whole pattern up to F. So then we apply the uh, key of the, the F key signature right here. Now, every note here is assigned to a certain line or a certain space. So this space right here is reserved for F. This line right here is reserved for G. This, line, this space right here is reserved for A. This line is reserved for B. And this little flat sign going right through the, uh, the B line right here tells us that unless otherwise stated, all notes, all B notes right here will be flattened. So even though there's no flat sign next to this, this key signature tells us that unless it says otherwise, this is a B flat right here. Oftentimes, when I ask somebody to explain the F major scale to me, they'll say F, G, A, A sharp, C, D, E, and F. And that's the wrong way to go about it. Again, every note is assigned to a certain place on the staff. So if you've already got an A natural in the key, then using another note is going to make little sense. If we were to apply a sharp right here and make this A sharp, it would still sound the same. It just, it's, it's more cluttered. It's more stuff to go in the score and make things more difficult to read, especially if you're going back and forth between an A and a B flat and you're writing it as A sharp instead. Then you've got the natural sign when you return back to the normal A, and it's just more difficult to read. This and... This. Doesn't that make a lot more sense? This, uh, well, even if, yeah. Wouldn't that be a lot easier to read than this? Likewise, let's take the uh, key of um, F sharp. So this is the uh, F sharp key signature right here. And we'll move everything up a whole, uh, a, a semitone. So here, the notes appear to be in the same place as the key of F. Because again, this is an F, this is a G, this is an A, this is a B, and so on. But these sharps right here tell us which notes are sharp and which are not. So this is F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B, C sharp, D sharp, E sharp, and F. Now, E sharp is the same as just F natural, but since we've already got F sharp, in place on the F spaces, then we need to use E for the note under it. So we've got E sharp here. E sharp and F are the same note. It sounds exactly the same, but for grammatical reasons, we're going to use E sharp instead of F. My guitar teacher told me something very important that I still use to this day. In a key, every letter gets represented. In other words, all seven letters from A to G show up. So if you try and spell the F major scale as F, G, A, A sharp, C, D, and E, then the B gets no representation because you've got A and A sharp in there, and so there's no representation for B. It's very easy to write out scales if you keep this in mind. For example, if we wanted to try writing out the G flat major scale, um, we just take 
G flat here. And we'll do that. So the notes here are, we have every letter represented G, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And as for which notes are flattened, we can see right here, we have G flat, A flat, B flat, C flat, not B natural, we have C flat. Again, because if you were to use B natural, things would get confusing. Since B is already taken up by the B flat right here. So we have B flat, C flat, D flat, E flat, F, and G flat. Okay, so in, th in that case, then why are certain keys written in sharps and certain keys written in flats? It's just convenience. Um, the key of D sharp major, if you were to write something in the key of D sharp major, you would have to use five sharps and two double sharps, which would really make things difficult to work with. Um, and instead, there's a much easier way because you can, D sharp is the same as E flat, so if you just write it in E flat major instead, it'll sound exactly the same, and you'll just be using three flats instead of five sharps and two double sharps. So what about chords then? Uh, how would you spell chords? Well, chords are built in thirds, so a minor chord is made up of the intervals. Um, you've got your root, you've got a minor third, and you've got a perfect fifth. So you could write a C minor chord as C, D sharp, and G, but that's not how it, that's not grammatically correct. Instead of D sharp, you should use E flat because, as you can see right here, this is the interval of a second. Okay, this is a, a, a major second. And if you raise this second, this D note, up to D sharp, you've got an augmented second. And that's not how the chord is built. It's built with a minor third. So if we just take the third, E, move it down to a minor third, we have E flat, we have C, E flat, and G. Again, because D sharp would be modifying the second, and since a minor chord is built with a root, a third, and a fifth, there is no second in there, so grammatically, you're using a minor third, not an augmented second. Likewise, a, a D sharp major chord could be written as D sharp, G, and A sharp, but for the same reason, G is the fourth, not the third, um, and it should be written as D sharp, F double sharp, and A sharp. But don't worry, it's relatively rare to come across double flats and double sharps. And they never happen within a key. If you ever see a double sharp or a double flat, it's outside of the key. So why is this important if enharmonic notes sound the same anyway? Well, first of all, it's important for reading and writing music as notation. It declutters the notes and it's just a whole lot easier to read. And second, it really does make things a bit easier to think about. Now, I know I didn't get into when to use sharps or flats when you've got out of key notes, um, but I wanted to explain how sharps and flats are used within keys because oftentimes I find that a lot of people have issues with that. Actually, I find for some reason a lot of people seem to prefer using sharps when, in, as opposed to flats when they talk about the black keys on a piano. And there are times when you need to use sharps and there are times when you need to use flats, with, depending on what key you're using. So again, if you're using a flat key, you should be saying those notes as flats and not as sharps. I encourage you to think about notes in whatever way makes the most sense to you. But learning the grammar of sharps and flats will really help you communicate with other musicians, especially when it comes to writing things down and transcribing things, which you should be doing. But hey, that's just a concept. And on Gaku Con- What do you mean that catchphrase is taken? This week's album of the week is the Katawa Shoujo Enigmatic Box of Sound. Um, Katawa Shoujo is a free indie visual novel with a free three disc soundtrack uh, available on their website at katawa-shoujo.com. Um, it's very good. It's inspired some music of my own, and uh, I recommend you check out the song Air Guitar, which I believe is on the second disc. Yes, uh, disc two, track four. You should check that out. It's very nice. 
Um, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, you can tweet me at OngakuConcept or ask me in the comments. I will see you guys next week.